is the Rebel Author Podcast, where we talk about books, business, and occasionally bad words. Hello, Rebels, and welcome to episode 25 of The Black Heron. This came to you live from New Zealand and the Romance Writers New Zealand Conference, where I was in person with the hero and, well, I should say heroine herself, Rachel Heron. Hello, Sasha Black. Hello, darling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that was probably loud for yeah, everyone. Yeah, was. <laughs> That's okay, we can uh, modulate that down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip that there and just forget about it. Sasha has really cool microphones. <laughs> oh, so my wife cool. actually found these. They're so clever. Are they not? The, and also, if you're outside, these mics will, like, reduce the sort of, you know, um, nature sounds so that your voice is still really crisp and quality. Um, so these are, like, podcast quality mics, but I got them for TikTok just oh. in case I was going to do more, like, face to screen. But actually, I end up doing that more on Instagram. I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday about the split between uh, TikTok versus um, Instagram. Uh, yeah, and anyway, my wife, wife found these, and they weren't even that much money, like 150 quid or something. I love and them. They're amazing. And two of us. I love them, and we're just, like, looking at each other. I know. We'll keep looking at the screen. Yeah, we are just checking. <laughs> it's recording. Because <laughs> we are in person. <laughs> We're in the same room, in the same country. It's wild. In the same world. And also, it just feels like we've been hanging out forever. Like, I know. That's it doesn't not... even feel real, though, yeah. does it? Like, I'm not... I feel no. like I'm having an out-of-body experience, which might be because you just made me so laugh I nearly passed out. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, literally, <laughs> listeners, dear listener, I nearly passed out. <laughs> We will not say what we were doing. <laughs> no, but I saw stars. I don't think I've ever laughed that hard. <laughs> I was worried I was going to pop a vein. <laughs> I, I we we had been asked to do something that I and I, to, that I did not want to do, and I told Sasha that I would rather have vanilla sex with a man. And um, yeah, 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 I nearly popped it, a vein laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, so we are in Christchurch. We are at Romance Writers of NZ. And, we, at the oh, and we promised yeah. an, an, yes. an, an IRL like black heron, and it's and it's here now, and it's so weird. And in typical fashion, we have no idea when we were going to do this, or and it's just or what we're going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a clue. It doesn't no. matter. No, exactly. exactly. But we have been asked for this. Yes, I know people are yes. waiting. <laughs> so we knew it was uh, needed. Yes. So this will be coming to you a little bit late, and that's fine. And um, so tell me, Sasha Black, how has your trip? Been. Oh. We met up in Wellington and had dinner. We did. And that was so and gorgeous. Was and I got to meet your wonderful wife and your incredible son, who is all that. Oh, thanks. He's I'm so very proud cool. of him. He is he's a very bright, very polite boy, and I do feel very lucky. We do have like Ugh, some issues with influence uh, because he likes to be liked, he wants to be popular, and so he will bend the knee to others, which obviously I'm trying to beat out of him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we would, and uh, you know, uh, probably I have some people pleasing tendencies that he may have picked up. So we are trying to do what we can to like eradicate that. But other than that, I am so proud of him. He's so, he's so like, he's so into the moment and so smart and so funny and and oh, I love oh, that like, he like asked you questions and I, things. I, we could have talked to him all night, honestly. <laughs> Uh, oh. Honestly, Lala and I were talking about that later. Like oh. we, we just could have been just us and him. Just well, Lala to was know each other. Lala was on the danger point line because because she games. He oh. if he had have realised that that had been it, that would have monopolised the conversation. <laughs> We had a gorgeous dinner, and so give us a, give us a little bit of the highlights of what, what you've been doing. I don't even know where to begin. Like news, it, it has been so. Okay, this is the bit that everybody will like. I did not open my laptop for like three weeks, and I'm not even joking. No word of a lie. I didn't even take it out of my rucksack. I am so proud of myself, but also. Mm, I think it might be symptomatic of like how crispy but too toasty. I was a little formula. bit of burnout. Yeah. I don't think any of your listeners will be that surprised. No. You're not you're not a you're not a cryptic tome. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I may have been in a bit of denial about that. Mm. Like I really struggle to see the burnout. 
Um, well, I mean, that, that's, that's an interesting point though, because burnout is painful and you like pain. Yeah. Yeah. So how could you see it? Yeah. I think maybe other people identify it more quickly because they're like, no, this hurts. I would like to stop. And you're yeah. like, that hurts. So <laughs> yeah, harder. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like I enjoy the burn. Yeah. You, I just have to be really careful that I don't get too burnt. Mm -hmm. And that is a very fine line. And I, I, actually often I need other people to tell me. Uh, and then I need to be able to say no. So they have to say it early enough. Right. <laughs> because you need to tell them how wrong they are. Yeah. And then it sneaks into your, the back of your mind. And then every, one day it goes, could they be a tiny, tiny, yeah. right? They're 99% wrong. Yeah, no, Could they be 1% <laughs> right? So have you had any feelings about not writing for three weeks? Any guilt or like d desire? Or has it just been like shut off? That part of your brain is shut off. It has been one of the weirdest experiences of my life because I literally so when we, this is I, I think I don't know if I mentioned this to you already but when we go on holiday normally we're by a pool so we do nothing which means my brain then has space to do everything oh, right oh, right whereas here yep. all we have done is do physically mm -hmm. and so my brain has been possibly the most quiet it has ever been and so I haven't had a single bloody thought in my head which has been so weird for somebody who's brain is so busy like it was the brain rest that I needed if not it wasn't really the physical rest I needed but it was the brain rest I needed oh that so, is yeah. so good and it's so it's so good for your brain we did the Abel Tasman walk what, last year and so five days out in wilderness and I thought that I would go and I would have all of this time to like meditate and have deep thoughts while we were walking and have really big epiphanies and have things you know go off in my brain oh I wrote about this and unstuck and I realized after the, you know, after five days, I had been in the moment the whole time. Yeah. And oh, my yes, brain was only that. full of where do I put my foot? Where do I put my foot? The next step, where do, what, where do I put my pole? And it was all day, every day. There yeah. were no thoughts. Yeah. I was just moving and it was incredible. Yeah. That, I think quite often, especially for creatives, because we're so up in our head all of the time, we're not present all of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, even though you're present, you're not present present, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, like that grounding in your physical kind of body and experience is really refreshing in a way that was very needed. I am slightly concerned that I'm going back having not really read input. I mean, I've had a lot of visual input. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that I can like turn all of that into words yeah, it's it's all it's I think that's grist for the mill that's that's all input the yeah. brain is the brain is going to be ready the you're, you're doing exactly right yeah so what you're, go on what are your favorite things that you've seen so far oh my god done. everything it is this is honestly one of the most beautiful countries I think I've ever visited um and it it's is. extraordinarily hard to choose one thing um Possibly my two favorites were Milford Sound. Oh, I was so excited you were going oh, there. God, it was like the edge of the earth yes. meets paradise. What was the weather like mm. that day? Because it's always rainy there. It's raining like 300 days a year. Yeah, it was sunny. <laughs> so you I mean, bit. I know. <laughs> I know. Everybody's like, there are two. I types haven't even of seen weather. the top of the the hill. Oh, oh my god, it was crystal clear not a fucking cloud in the sky it was unbelievable actually tell a lie there was like the occasional sort of wisp oh. around the top of a mountain <laughs> so yeah we got to see all of the fjords um <clears throat> the downside of all that sun is that the waterfalls aren't at their highest glory and mm. they did kind of say that but we still got to see four so I was like you know what that's fine and we also got to see a penguin which I was delighted about Lala will actually kill you in your sleep now <laughs> because her goal is to see a penguin I've seen them swimming in the water and no she's way. never seen one. Oh, oh my god Aww. they were so cute they had like these little funny ruffly things on their head they were adorable um I'm trying to think what else I'm sure we I think we saw a seal as well there yeah yeah um but yeah the penguins were like astonishing so it was just wonderful and the other one was the dark sky project so we got to go and see like the milky way and oh my god I can't believe how good iphone photos were I was astonished um so that was wonderful and made me feel really small and insignificant. Yes. And I love that feeling. I love that feeling. Oh, in fact, too. that's what New Zealand has done yeah. the whole trip. I just feel tiny, insignificant, like 
meaningless human, it's, but in the best way possible. It's a good place to practice that feeling because we're just so far removed from everywhere else. We're so, so far away. Yeah. And I mean, when you look, think about the Milky Way, you're looking at that that axis that we're all, you know, like you're, you're looking through all of those stars and, and uh, oh, yeah, it's incredible. I'm, I'm like in it. A hundred thousand years ago in the yes. past as well. Yeah. It's just like when people start talking about space and, you know, what you're looking at, you just like my brain sort of melts out of my ears, <laughs> but like, I love it. And I love like almost that philosophical feeling that you get looking at the stars and, you know, what does it all mean? Who fucking knows? Um, it's yeah. my favorite way to fall asleep right now is listening to books on space. I'm listening to one on black holes right now. Oh, wow. So I'm incredibly, I have so much knowledge that I can't access, but it's all in my brain because I listen to it as I fall asleep and it makes me just <laughs> feel so soothed. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I'm going to want really some recommendations. Good. It's really good. You have to tell me some books. All right. So, but you have been doing a little TikTok while you're here. So that's the only business you've been doing, right? Yes. TikTok and probably yeah. looking at email. No, I have not looked at email other than um, if Petra, who's dealing with my inbox, has sent me something because it's usually that I have to deal with. But I've done it from my phone and not my laptop. So I genuinely did not open my laptop. Also, my laptop's fucked anyway because the... Um, because I outsourced everything, I moved to a different email system yeah. and it's not syncing on my laptop. So even if I wanted to handle that email, I couldn't anyway. <laughs> so it was one of those perfectly serendipitous, like, you know, forcing me to actually have a break. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so, now, yeah. and now you are, you are entering work mode because yes. you are here as a personality. Yeah. You are here as a keynote. You yes. are here as amazing. Oh, can't I'm, wait to hear. I'm, yeah. You're keynoting, you're teaching, yeah. you're on a panel. Panel, I think. Yeah, sex yeah. panel. Yeah, sex panel. Of course yeah. you are. I'm most excited for that, I think. <laughs> oh, it's a, yeah, the keynote thing is, I always forget how anxious I get. Like I was kind of going through it the other night and it's really difficult because the keynote they specifically asked for was my journey. Mm -hmm. um, and because obviously I delivered a keynote in Vegas on my journey, it's in my brain, I'm like, no, we must always deliver new content. It always has to be, you know, like fresh and blah, blah, blah. And actually I can't change my past. <laughs> so it's, what's lovely though, is that they asked me to do this before I blew up. So I've got the before, and then I've got some slides in with numbers for like the after. Fabulous. So, yeah. So like the end half of the, or the end third of the, the presentation is all new, like, and, and you have to remember that we are people who like stories. And even if there was a person who has heard you every single time you've ever talked about your journey, that person is still going to be on the edge of her seat going, oh, I can't wait to hear this part. Oh, she's going to get to this part where she talks about the blank. And oh, I know about it. Yeah. People love that. Oh, well, I loved Unstuck. I have to say, because I read it in one go on the plane. I literally devoured it. And I have never been invest so invested in somebody's warmth. Like, oh. I, literally, I was like, I, I you know, the, 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 it's so funny funny because obviously you're the protagonist in it but Lala's such a huge character and it's just so clear how much you love her in the book so I was like so fucking invested in the warmth or her warmth moving to um, New Zealand so for everybody listening Lala didn't want to get cold yes yeah, so it's literally warm we're not talking about her like warm fuzzies we're no. talking about her <laughs> terror of being yeah. cold yeah and, and so when our heater went out and we had that like polar vortex a few months ago now you understand yeah I was like, oh no deal. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it was like one of the caveats of moving. Yeah. I loved, I, I loved had, it. I had a hundred thousand fears, and she had one. It was <laughs> literally, it's the only one she could think of. Oh, I was being cold. So I, I yeah. also loved how honest and truthful you were in it, and in like a flawed way, in the in the way that you'd approached her fear first, and then you were like, actually, no, I need to give credit to this and like handle it. And I, I was just like. Oh, that just made me love you even more because I was like, I love the raw vulnerability oh. and like honesty in it as well. That's, so that's what I love about memoirs, and I get to like be real. But that is one of my biggest flaws is that, that I mean, I have a ton of them, but like when I I always react to things the wrong way first, mm. you know. Mm. And um, and she is annoyingly most often right about the wrong ways I'm approaching things. Yeah, it's so <laughs> annoying, isn't it? Chloe is exactly the same. She's always fucking right, and I'm just like. <sighs> It's so annoying so that annoying. they're right. I know. <laughs> I uh, feel your pain. But usually I do react in a way that is not appropriate or 
you know, I just, I, my brain goes too fast and I already have the answer and I don't want to discuss an answer with her that she might have an answer to something because I've already figured it out. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and that's, yeah. that can cause real problems. And yeah. I do talk about that in the book. Is it just, but is that's one of the wonderful parts of it. So Thank you. yeah, I loved Thanks it. For reading I loved it. And then that must have been fun just to meet her too. Yeah, just to her. exactly. Yeah, it was. And I was like, when you talked about being in the room for like 24 hours a day, I just don't know how you did it. I think I would have lost my mind. Oh, the windows didn't even open. The window I, I was smaller even. than this little one here and the window would not open and it, the heater was stuck on. Oh my God. <gasps> yeah. Okay. So we are at a conference. Yes. What are your best conference tips for introverts? Because obviously a lot of authors are introverts. I have this new rev revelation on this particular trip because the last time I went to a conference was this conference two years ago. I haven't done conferences for a while. And that time I was the keynote and I had, I think I did the keynote and I did two workshops and a panel and I felt an incredible obligation to always be like out and chatting and, and all of the other um, presenters and meeting everybody and having a great time. And I literally made myself so, so, so ill that I spent the next three days in bed vomiting. Like oh it, I was so ill afterwards. And, um, and this time I just realized that is not sustainable. Mm. And here's the thing I realized last night. <clears throat> nobody cares where the fuck I am. Even if I was the keynote, nobody cares because if you are not in eyesight, everyone, if they think of you, which they probably won't, if they think of you, they will think you're out doing something else that is important. Instead, last night I was in here by 7.30 and I took a tub. <laughs> I had it. the best bath. I read a book. I read, a, I read, um, Oh, I've got so much business, exciting things going on in my head. I read a business book and then I got my brain all sauced up because I'm feeling <clears throat> businessy in my head. And I'm just, I'm taking breaks whenever the hell I want them and nobody will notice where I am or where I am not. We have, I always, I always have the FOMO. Like if I'm not at the cocktail party, well, then what am I going to be missing? I'm going to not go. Are you not to going person. tonight? I don't know. <laughs> I just made up my mind as you said it. I might go for like 15 minutes yeah, and then get out. But the noise really overwhelms me. Um, I'm, ha I'm happy to talk to lots of people and have lots of conversations. But as soon as the noise reaches a certain decibel, I get super stressed. I should wear, I didn't bring loops. I, yeah. Allie has an extra pair of loops I might borrow, but um, I, didn't, I forgot mine. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So that's my thing is I am hiding <clears throat> whenever, not even hiding. This, I've paid for this. This is my time. I'm having incredible revelations. Are you going to tell uh, me about those? They yeah. Sound amazing. I, 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 well, I have, I just had this thing happen last night. I'm like, I want to write these, you know, the, the fix books, you know, that we've talked about and starting with the, the one that's called the fix, which is the sobriety book, which I'm almost done. Well, I'm in the middle of revising for the last time. And then the little, the, the smaller fix books, because I want to do, Ser a series and I'm not interested in fiction right now and I'm 52 years old and my superpower I have two superpowers one is input number one input collation like I am a collator of information and my second superpower is encouragement slash comfort so the fix all of the fix books I want to write they're all clickbait and I'm going to lean into that clickbait because the clickbait is yes you want the fix for this thing but you're also exactly where you should be right now. How do you embrace that? How do you get comfortable with the discomfort and moving into a place that might make you feel more authentically you in whatever it is, whether it is money or relationships or what, whatever, or your body or any of these things? What do you think? I am obsessed already. And the reason that I'm obsessed is to do with my keynote. Stop it. I'm not even joking. So the whole point, of my keynote is to be more you because that that is my journey like I was definitely not me for a really really long time I was what I thought everybody else wanted and um the more I have lent into me the more success I've had so like I have a whole slide where I list out the things that people have said negative to me yes. and then I have turned them into positive TikToks and almost all of them have gone viral 
and I'm not even fucking joking. <laughs> Can you give me an example? Yeah. So um, somebody was like, "You, what, why do you always talk about lesbian straps, for example? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> listeners, I had to go straight for the money shot, didn't I? Anyway, <clears throat> so I put that on TikTok, basically like, you know, when you're looking for the lesbian strap or whatever scene. Um, and, and I think pretty much all of them have gone viral. <laughs> Or um, somebody said that I fetishized lesbians. So I then um, basically took the most spicy scenes I could and put them all over TikTok. They went viral. Um, yes. And then things like when... So the irony is that obviously, like, I was told no, that, like, not to do this because lesbian romance just is such a small niche you're never going to make. You might make some money, but you're not going to make big money. Um, and so I sort of told that story on uh, TikTok, and that was the first one that then went viral. And then funnily enough, um, about two weeks ago, I did a different version of that on Instagram, and that's gone viral. <laughs> so I'm like, whenever people tell you no, whenever people pick at you something that is really personal and unique to you that's the fucking thing you need to lean that into that is exactly what i came to last yeah. night the, my biggest problem with close personal relationships um like with lala is i show love by listing all of the ways i know how to do whatever we are doing a little bit better i can optimize it this way this will feel better this will be more interesting and then this will be actually more this will save time motion energy and you, you don't have maximize do the, it right like, it's, <laughs> it's in the top like yeah. 12 i think yeah. but it's it but it's the number one input it's like i have learned everything about everything i have ever been interested in and then i can tell all of the different ways that might work for you and the wife doesn't want that because yeah. she's a rebel she's yeah. a rebel she's a she's a pusher against her um she doesn't want me to hear that and it is our probably it's my biggest flaw when it comes to dealing with her however with people who sign up for that for people who go through my classes for people who listen to the podcast where we're talking about awesome ways to do things I am very good at presenting a multitude of ways to do things while encouraging people. So using that thing that is also my biggest flaw mm. and it is my biggest superpower. I think we all need to, like as creatives, we need to find the thing about us that is the most polarizing. When yes. you find that thing, you lean the book in. The most polarizing and the most brain enjoyable. Right. Like the, and oh. let's talk about Joe, yeah. right? Because that is what <laughs> she has done. Joanna. Joanna. <laughs> oh, darling, we love you. Um, but yes. with her AI, AI and futurism, right? It's so fucking polarizing. And superpower. And she's leaning in and now she's like mm. growing mm. and finding a huge Patreon community because people want that. Mm. But mm. it's terrifying. It is terrifying to lean in to something Thing about ourselves that is so polarizing yep. and me writing the spiciest smuttiest of smut that is also lesbian is super fucking polarizing and, I don't and it gives you all of the energy it gives you <laughs> all, all of, of the passion all of it and the more people get pissy about it the more energy pennies i get <laughs> because i do things for spite <laughs> enough of a brain to like I, I my memory so bad I can never act on spite I can't act oh. on spite or grudges because by the morning I will have forgotten like I just won't have even if That's I remember what it was I don't have the feeling about it anymore yeah, yeah. both Lala and I are exactly that way we both have positivity in top five or something like oh, that oh wow we just can't have long fights because we're like nah, oh no I will hold a grudge <laughs> <laughs> and I will use it <laughs> and you are using it all the way to the bank <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly, which makes me feel like a winner. <laughs> so this is, I mean, it's seriously like the biggest tip. This is, the, I know, and it's the, the most biggest, most simple Simple tip. and the hardest thing you'll what ever do, you, do. What do you love the most and what pisses other people <laughs> off? <laughs> if you, the, the, Venn, the Venn diagram, yeah. the, where those two things meet. Yeah. Is where you could happily yeah. hang your shingle. So just ask yourself, how do you irritate people? <laughs> Or, or ask the people around you. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got an anonymous box here. <laughs> but it is true. Like, if you look mm. at, um, you know, what any famous, successful, or kind of person out there, 
you will be able to identify like the one thing that they do and it will people will either love it or they'll hate it or they'll have an opinion because I don't remember who has that quote you know indifference is like the yes. biggest um but as long killer. as they're not indifferent you know if they love me hate me just don't be indifferent or whatever yes yeah, exactly yeah. that one and I I really feel as creators and writers that is the most important thing above anything else because the thing is as well once you've done that and you've found it and you've put it into your books put it into your marketing and that's the thing that people often don't do they're like they've done it in their books but they don't then do it in their fucking marketing i am and my like, brain is exploding <laughs> right now because you are exactly right this right is that's the only reason i'm having success yeah because i am putting the most polarizing shit i can think of onto social media yeah Put put that that irritating superpower yeah. into Force the marketing. People to have an opinion about that, you. I mean, and I, for some reason, I haven't thought I have not thought about Jerry Seinfeld in I don't know fifteen years. Why would I think about Jerry Seinfeld? But when you think about him and his success, he came out of nowhere because he liked to make jokes about nothing, and then he had a whole show that was about nothing, just people talking about their shopping list or whatever. And when people talk about him, still they say he was the guy that made comedy out of nothing. Like that, that was his marketing shtick. They didn't say, oh, Jerry Seinfeld, what a funny guy. Oh, I gotta go see him. He's so funny. They said, what? Now, how is he talking about shopping bags? And I'm laughing. Like that was, that was his marketing. Yeah, because it was unique and different. Did and we wouldn't... just crack the code? Uh, well, I mean, that is, I, I, I feel strongly that this is the missing piece. And this is why knowing yourself as a creative is so important and why we often see so many successful people having therapy, having coaching, having, um, you know, like a, yeah, like some kind of business coach or success coach or whatever. And it's because we have to peel away those layers of societal bullshit mm -hmm. to actually find the core of who we are. Um, I don't know what that says about me, smutty bitch. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, kidding, sort of. Um, but yeah, so... Coaches, therapy, tarot cards. Yeah, via... love it, love it. Would you like to draw a tarot yeah, card? Yeah, I really I do would. have my I know tarot cards here. This is the fifth spirit tarot, so um, okay. it's really cool. It is um, gender inclusive. Oh, oh I love it's just, it. It's an amazing deck. Um, it is really great. But now I will have you just kind of like shuffle it, move it around in your hands okay. while we're talking. And then, you know, okay, if they cool. all fall out on the table, that's fine. But okay, cool. But you're just infusing that with your energy. And this is just the deck that I brought along. But I wonder if you, let's see, how would we like to play it? Would you like to draw a card for like, um, the rest of your trip or you want to draw a card for something bigger or smaller, or do you want to draw a couple of cards? What would you like to, um, to know about? You can also not tell me what question you're asking and we'll Ooh. just draw. Okay. Um, I don't like yes or let's not do yes or no's or will I be ultimately successful? Yes or no like this. It's okay. I have a question. Say, okay. I do have a question. So Ellie has given me strengths homework mm -hmm. and <laughs> This is the first time in the history of Ellie giving me homework that I have failed to do it. And the reason I have failed to do it is because I have not had a single thought in my brain since we've been away. Um, and what she has talked about is the fact that um, I have been very tactical now for about 18 months in order to kind of build to the point where I am in business. And she's like, you need to be more strategic. And me just picking which series is next or which book is next is a tactical choice. Um, <clears throat> and so she's like, your timelines are activator long. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. Okay, that's true. What does uh, that mean? So, what does that so mean? like, you know, activator basically has very short. We uh, are, we're yeah. like, everything needs to be yesterday. Activator is the starter. It, immediate. I want it now. It needs to be right this second. And so I struggle to see much more than, <clears throat> I mean, like, I have like a, a dream and a goal and a trajectory, but like realistically, I'm struggling to see much more than three to six months ahead, a year ahead. Um, you know, activate along is like 24 months. Um, and she's like, as a CEO of your business, you need to be thinking three, five, 10 years. Mm. And so she was like, what do you want? Where do you need to go? Like, where, where are you going? And I was like, oh, uh, so, so a good question to ask for something like that might be, um, what should I be aware of in five years or what should I be aware of in 10 years? What should, okay. um, what is, or what is advice for three years or whatever, what we could do, we okay. could do like, we could do three, five, 10 or 
Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I um, I sort of have a couple of different ideas about what I should be doing, and I'm not really sure. So that would be very interesting. Let's do that. Okay. What do I do now? So I'm so holding the cards. Go, hold, um, put them down on the desk. Everybody does it differently, but use your left hand okay. and then cut the deck. Oh. Yep, perfect. And then we'll just put that on top, and now your part is done. How many questions do you have in mind? Um, well, did you say we ask about three years, five years, and ten years? Do you years? like that? Yeah. Okay, so then this will be three years, five years, and 10 years. And so this is advice that you may want to think about as you move into these things. Okay. All right, so advice for three years is the nine of wands. I'm not used to using this deck, but this is this is cracking me up, so I'm What's just gonna. What's interesting is that I saw in my Slack group the other day, somebody said that they were equating um, the, ha are they houses or what are they? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Houses to strengths and yeah, they're, ones they're are suits. influencing. <laughs> ones, are, ones are power and energy oh. and um, desire. And the nine of wands is all about stamina and perseverance. <laughs> and, you know. So this is three years. So for the next three that's years. That's for the three years you're okay. going to be persevering, basically, Refusing to take no for an answer. I'm just looking at one of the things I, I frequently look on. Ba on in the in the traditional Rider Waite deck, Rider Waite Smith deck, the um, the guy is standing up at the up at the gates and he's like leaning on his is it a uh, sword or something like, and he's just like still guarding. I am still guarding the, the the fortress behind me, and you will have to go through me. I am here and I am doing it. I am getting it done. Yeah. So three, three years, we are, that the, feels about it's, right. It's a, it's a, it's a fight. It's yeah. a fight, but you're winning. Yeah. Then you're almost won. Yeah. Oh, oh that's okay, exciting. So five years. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> people, people with tarot will understand. Oh, <laughs> King of pentacles. Oh, pentacles are about wealth. They are about <laughs> Uh, the material world they no are way. also often about like health but things that are tangible this is the money card look at the king of pentacles here <laughs> our, our our gender non-binary uh, character who I, who I love right here is standing in front of a bunch of money this is about at the top of what you can do in like just success this is wow this is you have reached five years <laughs> It's going to be work for three years, yeah. and then I don't know what happens between four and five, but this is... this is Solidification, you, perhaps. Baby. <laughs> so, Emmett, oh my God, that is hilarious. Let's, that is let's see so what else. Um, let's see what else can... Because I always like to look at what other people say, too, so I don't have to remember everything. But uh, um, you are adept, you are steady, and you basically <laughs> have everything. People rely on you. Um, you're in charge of all of your actions and in all, all of the things that you have earned. And wow, what a card. <laughs> all right, and then advice or something to keep in mind for 10 years from now. Oh, this is gorgeous. Six of Cups, which is the, it's like the playful childlike card. How oh. do you want to, how do you want to remember where you came from and honor that? Let's see, um, it's like, it's childhood, it's goodwill, it's fun, it's innocence, it's... Um... Well, and do you know what's interesting? Wow. In 10 years, my son will be an adult. <sighs> so that feels like... You know, the like the end of an era. Yeah, isn't that isn't that because that's well, immediately got when you goosebumps. yeah immediately when you said that I was like oh wow yeah he'll be twenty nearly yeah twenty and then so, you will be able to move into this really playful yeah like whatever I want you know just like doing the things that have always brought you joy wow a really light heart this is I, I I'm more scared to like. A little bit scared to give these kind of readings because I don't know what's going to happen. Like it could have been the tower and the da da da, you know. Just but um, oh, I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I so love you've got it. this is basically this is diligent hard, hard work. work. Keep doing what you're Keep doing. Keep doing what you're doing, years. and it does feel tiring sometimes, and it is worth it. And the thing to remember about the nine is it's all, just about at the ten, which is culmination, mm -hmm. and you've you've achieved. And the King of Pentacles is as is you know fuck off money, and. Um, <laughs> Do you like and, that six, <laughs> and six of cups. Yeah. What is that? Oh, what a lovely reading. Oh, okay. Well, Thank I'm going to do it for you. myself now. You want me to do yeah, it? Yeah, I'm definitely. I've curious. never done this one. I like to. Yeah. Three, five, and ten. Three, five, and ten. I've never, never done this. This is great. All right. I'll give it a good shuffle. You vamp for a minute while I do that. Yeah. Okay. So I suppose 
The other thing we could talk about is the fact that we are coming into the last kind of, I don't want to say trimester, but like trimester of the year, like third of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So do you have like plans, big plans, or are you in a period of change? Like I always find conferences tend to elicit like some kind of change in the plan. This one, this one just, um, yeah, I think I, I think I am. I, Oh, and I'm also, I also started reading. I really like, I don't know how to say his last name, Mike Michalowicz, I think yeah, it is. Yeah, Profit um, First, I love, he did. I love Profit First, and I run my business on Profit First. And the next, and I've been listening to his podcast with A.J. Harper, who wrote Write a Must Read, oh. which is for people who write prescription, prescriptive nonfiction is a must read. If you're just, if you're fiction or, or maybe some memoir, um, it's not, it's not really for you. But, but the books that I want to write... She's amazing, and they have a podcast. And um, and so I, last night I started reading Fix It First, and I, I realized he's got this whole method of fixing your business, and I need to be focusing on some, some clear things, like making money in order to be doing what I really want, which is moving quickly so, through these fix books. Oh, my God. So, like, in a Marvel universe, fix books, each book is a different, like, Marvel character. You're going to culminate with a memoir on fixing the fix <laughs> like in your business kind of oh my god that is like <laughs> I love uh, that is like <laughs> and now I'm thinking of them as Marvel characters yes. so, okay so now, so now okay now so we have no idea what's going to happen now so I'm doing three five ten here we go with this with this um, in mind oh t- um, temperance for this for three years which is really <laughs> really I always hate this card but I love you um, it's really about balance and sobriety like uh, balance like do have you know have do what you need to do but also don't lose yourself yeah um don't lose which yourself. is kind of what, is the exactly decision what it, that you made right yeah. and so it's living that decision in a balanced way because god knows I don't need to be yeah that's okay I love you I love you card I take it back <laughs> five years oh five years now I have the nine of wands Uh-oh. <laughs> five years I'm still gonna be still gonna be working that's fine though. I love work. Yeah. Keep going. This is, this is basically like, I could call this one of theirs multiple of these, but this is the keep going card. Keep but going. maybe that's saying like, you're finding your balance now and the thing that gives yeah. you joy in the work and then keep going with it. I love, okay. Maybe that's, I love that. Yeah. I love that. And then 10 years is, oh, that, um, nine of, wait a minute. I have to look this one up because I can't remember. This deck is not as familiar. I don't like to travel with my deck that I use every day. Um, Yes, They're very pretty. I love tarot cards for how beautiful they are. I guess the um, oh, that's the, that's why I don't. I was getting the number wrong. Um, that is the four of cups, and that is the card where you, um, where you take what is given to you. You, you're you're not apathetic about what you have. You take what is handed to you. Let me. I'm not as. Let me, get what this good guy says here. Um, so like gratitude. You, yeah. 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 You go within, you don't, you're looking within and it is about gratitude. It is, it is about like, don't look so inward. Don't go up your own ass basically and get so inward that you forget what is also being given to you. I love all that. Right, so I'm not seeing like you're going to make all the money in the world, Rachel Heron, but, <laughs> um, but they're, but they're beautiful cars. <laughs> Why am I not surprised that you guys <laughs> got to make all the money? I, I do like money, and I do feel like money likes me. <laughs> My wife and I always have this joke, that, and she gets quite irritated with it, because uh, I'm a really good manifester and like if if we need something or like there's some kind of but this is there has to be an actual figure attached to it there has to be a figure amount that I need and then boom it's just that like we talked it, about this yeah. because I am I and I was talking about it with Ellie too is that I always have the figure that I don't know if you and I've talked about this talk that I had with Ellie we, we I told Ellie like I have this figure that we need to make for us to survive and I always make it within like a thousand dollars. It is so close. And so Ellie was like, oh no, I said, I, we have the, we have the number I need to make in order to make it like to pull by. She goes, oh, it sounds like you have the number for surviving. Mm-hmm. What's the number for thriving? And then she gets like, well, screw thriving. What's the number for flying? Yeah. So I need to change those numbers yeah, in do. my head. Yeah, you do. And, um, so I do it very slowly and, um, I have had, 
here's what's ha here's what, three times this has happened. Okay. I had a figure that I wanted to hit to break like a, a like, let's just say like a thousand barrier. Yeah. I miss it by about 300 quid and I'm devastated and I'm like, right, well, fuck you. I will do it next time. And then I don't just pass it. I blow through it as a number and that has literally happened three times and it is unbelievable and it's I genuinely think it's so it's good that you miss it the first time yeah it's, it's yeah because excellent. it makes me hungry it makes you angry it makes me angry whereas a lot of hungry. us and I think that I'm more even though my competition is in the top 10 I'm not like you I think for a lot of us it makes us go oh I shouldn't have you know oh, oh I well, guess I was so I was overreaching if I'd missed it by thousands ah I'd be like that yes but because I missed it like one month Squeak. it was like 46 pounds I missed it by and I was like fuck Did you, you just go out motherfucker like, like, rob somebody on I the corner <laughs> <laughs> right like I'm like you're just taking the piss this is just a test to see how much I want it and I'm like I'm not backing down like who are you even talking to Sasha the universe <laughs> you know but like because I miss it by like pennies I'm like oh you are just anyway and then I end up blowing right past it and um that's what happened this last month as well. So I will be sharing the figures Yay! in the keynote. Yay! Yeah, actually, I'm gonna let's do this okay. because there is one particular figure that is astonishing. Um, so last January, like, okay, so for for caveats, I'm a wide author. Book sales are not the only money that I make. Last January, I was in transition. So I had... This is last January of 2023. 2023. Oh, 2023. Okay, 2023. Yeah. I had stopped writing nonfiction. Mm -hmm. I had thrown everything into writing fiction, but I hadn't yet published because I published in February 2023. So I had seen a rapid decrease in income it, and I was not making enough to live off my books. So I made just under a thousand pounds on Amazon with uh, in total. And of that, I can't remember the exact percentages because it's on the slide, but it's something like 1.2% was fiction. So like 13 quid. Yeah. <laughs> right now Rachel knows the punchline is coming okay so all of that thousand pounds was basically non-fiction today well let's talk about July 2024 and um, so 17 months later I made on Amazon alone 19,355 pounds in British pounds that was a high five you just heard because we're in the same room <laughs> of which Oh, British pounds? British pounds. Uh, so US people, that's about 26,000? 20, Something, Something like that. Like 25, 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one yeah, month. Yeah, and in New Zealand, I don't even know. Oh, it would be like $140,000. <laughs> not it strong. It must be like, like, it's about double, isn't it? It's about yes. 38,000. Anyway, <clears throat> that was just Amazon. And... Um, it, but, the, but the astonishing figure, that's not the astonishing figure. Of that money... 0.8% was nonfiction. <laughs> so 99.2% was fiction. Oh, my face is so happy. <laughs> like that is, I mean, literally a complete swap in 17 months and an explosion. Like it's just... From that... zero, from zero. You did not have a following. You no, I did not. You didn't no. tell people your pen name nope. for a long time. Yeah. And, and that is, I, I, that, when I, I can't even get the words out, but when I was creating the presentation and I did the math, I then just burst out crying in the middle of my office and my wife came downstairs because this was after she dislocated her knee. She was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I'm just so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like literally hysterical blubbering because I I was like, I can't believe the, the change. And don't get me wrong, like I absolutely love writing nonfiction. I will write more nonfiction. Um, but the dream was always to write fiction. Yeah. It, that was my dream. Yeah. So to then, like, be at that point, I just, it is, I just can't. And, and you haven't even, like, the, the punchline is that that's just Amazon. That was just also, Amazon, yeah. And that's not your Shopify. That is not your. No, which is my second biggest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite, 
staggering if I'm honest mm -hmm. and and I get really nervous about sharing numbers because obviously like that is like ridiculous money to some people and to other people in the industry it's nothing you know so I mean and numbers are meaningless in a way it's only the meaning that you give to the numbers mm -hmm. that makes it meaningful um which is why the number isn't important to me but the the 180 degree swap is the thing that feels really important to me mm -hmm. like that was the moment that I really went for the dream but coming back to what we said earlier I did it by being polarizing and doing the thing that I loved most kind yeah, of thing. yeah. I did, I've just had this whole like you know series of thoughts while, while you're saying all this amazing stuff is that you know your dream was always to write fiction and my dream was always to write fiction and have written fiction that I love and that I'm proud of but my real dream has always been because my brain was like okay no I'm fiction again I'll do fiction I'm start fiction tomorrow because my brain always does it at conferences I will do I'm gonna start all the things but what I love is creative nonfiction. I love prescriptive nonfiction. it is what I've always loved since I was a kid it's what I'm good at writing and I know that when I put my all into it you know that's what we are doubling down we're we're quadrupling down on who we are and that's what you're doing and what I want to say too is I know that sometimes you worry a little bit about sharing figures and there will always be assholes who take it the wrong way like you don't even deserve it go to hell all of that you know you lesbian burn <laughs> sinner or whatever I don't know what they what they say but um but for the vast vast majority of the you know 98.9 .9 of people who are kind and hopeful of all writers that's the vast majority of them all they want is to look to somebody who is doing what they want to do and see success that you're you're doing the biggest benefit to people you might be pissing off a couple of assholes and who cares but you're helping everyone else say like oh i thought publishing was dead everybody tells me that you know it's harder than it ever was and i don't think it is i think it's easier than it's ever been and in a niche yeah it's in a niche where everybody thought it would fail yeah and that's that's what i hope gives people hope yeah. if, if you know what i mean like yeah. and that's why it's not the number the fight the what the income that's meaningful in that slide what's meaningful is the fact that you can 180 mm -hmm. in less than a year and a half mm -hmm. you know and yeah i'm like I, I very rarely say that I'm proud of myself, but I, this is one time I am pretty fucking proud of myself. <laughs> I hope that you say that on stage oh, tomorrow. Oh, I don't know. I'll try. That, I might, that oh. might be hard. That might be hard. That might be hard. But yeah. yeah. But I'm so proud of you. And we were doing this show back then. I want to go back and like listen to one of yeah, those episodes we from when we were because we were talking really cryptically like yeah. I knew your pen name I knew you were what you were thinking about yeah. but you would speak very cryptically about what you were doing yeah <sighs> yeah I want to go back and like listen I never listen to ed episodes because I don't I don't like my own voice but um but I would love to hear how, what your voice sounded like when you were stepping out into this <gasps> yeah because I've done so much like self-work as well since then yeah and that like so I really genuinely do feel like I am a different person than I was like 18 months ago. I can feel it I can feel it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were already amazing, but you really are centered and, and you know yourself. Yeah. Like before I think, you know, burnout was a, a terror for you. Now you're like, oh, maybe I was in a little bit of a burnout, but you know, <laughs> you know how to get it back. Did I tell you the Ellie like miracle thing that she shared me with me this last time? You know how she always goes, gives those big truth bombs. Yeah. Um, so this is our coach that we share. Uh, I always know that I can make money. Like I, I am c completely confident that if we ran out of money, I would just use my brain and I would make more money. That's and whenever I'm nervous about money, really in the back, as long as I'm healthy enough to do it, I can make money. I have no doubt. And she knows that about me. So she goes, how do you feel about making money? If you had to make money, could you make money? Mm. I'm like, yeah, of course I could. And she says, um, but I was talking about like, you know, I'm going to be teaching more. How do I, how do I manage my energy? How do I do these things? And, um, she, <laughs> and she said, well, didn't you just tell me that, um, you know, you, by, by resting, you need more energy. And I was like, what? And she how goes, very dare she. Oh, how very dare indeed. And she said, so it, I, she said, do you know how to make energy? And I was like, I do. <laughs> oh, I do. Because I had confessed to her that sometimes when I am worn out, I have to like go to bed and like literally, you know, put the earplugs in and just stay. And I was, I was telling her about it as it was a liability. Like I have, I do hard things and then I have to rest. <laughs> and she's like, oh, and then you have energy. 
And it was this revelation. I was like, oh my God, not that I have to make energy. And I'm not calling it resting anymore. I'm calling it energizing. <laughs> oh I do not God. rest. <laughs> Fucking love. I'm stealing that. Lala walked into the room the other day and I had my like earplugs in and it was completely dark. It's the middle of the afternoon and she opened the door. She goes, are you okay? I said, I'm energizing. <laughs> I'm energizing. Get the fuck out. <laughs> and it was so good. And now I know that like I, when I, if I'm worried about energy management, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I know how to make the energy that I need. And it was such a relief. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really difficult to admit that you do actually know how to do it. <laughs> like, I, funny enough, I had a conversation with Chloe uh, on this trip and I said to her, so I'm going to need two holidays every year. <laughs> she was like, I don't, I don't want two holidays. And I was like, well, I'm going to need two because I burn too hot and hard not to have two. Yeah. And I'm not 20 anymore. And that has been the most horrendous realization. I legitimately do not have as much energy as I had at 20. Mm -hmm. And I fucking hate it. Well, uh, that's what I was having uh, this, this last night, this revelation last night. It was, a, it was a come to Jesus. It was like, I have all these books I need to write. I'm 52 years old and I'm not a fast, I mean, I am a fast writer in terms of quickness, but I'm not a fast producer of books. I've proven that. What am I waiting till I'm 65 to get these books out? I am, I got the energy now. Yeah. Let's do it. I don't have time. And I feel like I've just like... Yeah. Yeah. Like, and also it's your choice, how you expend that energy. Yes. You get to choose how you put your pennies in the slot machine. Nobody else can choose that for you. And how I get them back and how I don't tell anybody where I am in the conference. I just kind yes. of lay in the bed and, and, <laughs> and do read Black business books. episodes <laughs> secretly behind the doors. This was the best episode. I know. Oh wait, but I should ask you, what are you doing for like the end of the year? The last <sighs> trimester? Well, I don't really know. So I, the two things I do know is that I'm finishing the third book in the Vampire Trilogy and I'm running a Kickstarter. I do know those two things. We've got the Kickstarter launch date. Um, I really want to write more books and I kind of have two series ideas that will all be in the same world, interconnected, everything, because everybody loves that. Um, but I, I don't really know. I, I'm not... I don't know. And that is a very odd position for me to be in. Yeah. I, I will need to go home and plan. Yeah. And I think I'm going to have to have some serious conversations with Ellie um, because I do need to continue what I'm doing to earn money. Mm -hmm. Hello, thank you, Cards, for reiterating <laughs> that. But I do think I also need to put in place some longer-term things. So we have transitions because... September next year, Atlas goes to high school. And that's going to shift the amount of time that I, ha that I have. It's going to shift kind of the structure and dynamic of the day. We've got Chloe doing longer working days and stuff. So I think we kind of, yeah, I need to plan the tactical work I'm going to do, but also mm -hmm. plan bigger things. Okay, so that will be a good place to go the next time we talk at the end of the month because we're yeah. already a week into the, the month now. Yeah. And so at the end, we'll talk about you'll be home, you'll have some yeah, pants. I'm going to do time. I'm going to do some actual, you know, planning of what I want. And I just realized... Maybe we should I'm come back to three, five, and ten. Okay, I have to take this back. I read this wrong because I'm not used to this deck and this look like cups to me. These are wands. Those ah. are obviously wands. These are flames. This is the four of wands. So in ten years, uh, this is the freedom, celebration, and excitement card. <gasps> Shut I was up. like, is that the four of wands? It's just hard. It's hard to read. Yes, celebration. This is the one where everyone is celebrating, like under this big, like it's out in out in the garden. It's um, letting uh, claiming self determination, letting go of limitations. Um, oh my god! Thrills. Oh, uh, it means freedom. Okay, give me another. That is incredible. You give a good lesbian high five. Because <laughs> you know what, straight women. They, oh, let's do a straight woman high five. <laughs> <laughs> we are sorry to all of the straight women listening yes you, but you do have to work on your high five you gotta go in hard stick stick yeah straight women often just do like, it one brush. more time with feeling <laughs> okay so i'm really glad i figured that out because that was bumming me out i didn't want the four of cups i got the four fucking ones that's the yeah, freedom you do. freedom celebrate card oh i okay. love that it feels like everything's gonna come to fruition this is perfect. yeah Oh, that I'm going to be working a little bit longer than you, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you, my friend. Yeah. Oh, I love so, this. So, 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 so I fun. wish we could do them We're all gonna, in person. Wait, give me the mic. <laughs> They're going to hear the hug. They're going to hear the hug. I love, it got loud. Okay, here we go. Don't forget to tune in and subscribe on your podcatcher. And when you have a moment, please leave a review.